Our job is to create anything in the film that's not real. A lot of that would have been done traditionally by building models or miniatures or maquettes and photographing them and compositing. But we've developed uh, all of our techniques just using digital technology. None of it's real, but we hope you believe it. Hi, I'm Bram. And I'm Ashley. And we're from the Santa Barbara Middle School Teen Press, and today we're here with... Joe Letary. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Bram. So, we are getting our report cards this week, mm -hmm. and when you were in seventh, for seventh grade, what did your teachers say to you? I got all A's when I was in seventh grade. Yeah, so, um, and I'm not, I don't remember what they said to me, other than I got all A's. You are one of the world's leading VFX artists, mm -hmm. and I'm in seventh grade, and how did you get from seventh grade to where you are now? All right, well, when I was in seventh grade, I was really interested in science and math, and so, um, it also, when I was in seventh grade, we were doing things like sending people to the moon. And so it, I just was very interested in space travel and, and astronomy and things like that. So um, I just always had this interest in science and kind of, you know, the world that you can't see and, and just trying to understand that. I also really enjoyed movies, you know, looking like the old Ray Harryhausen movies with the creatures and, and you know, King Kong and, and then seeing movies like 2001 and Star Wars just got me interested in thinking, well, is there a way to kind of put all this together, you know, this kind of idea of science and art and to create these fantastic worlds and create these fantastic creatures. And so uh, I just kind of taught myself how to do that and just learn, you know, the computers were a good tool to do that with and learned how to use them and just kept working up to making pictures and then making movies. If I wanted to go into your field, what suggestions would you have for me? Study hard. Um, I would say, you know, knowing a bit about computers is very useful these days because we use them for everything. So that's kind of like just a basic tool. That's like learning to, you know, practice your scales before you play the piano. That's just, that becomes your instrument. Uh, and then find something that you're really interested in. You know, there's so many aspects of filmmaking that people can get involved with, whether it's the, the photography side of it or the performance, you know, the animation. Uh, or whether it's doing design, there's there's a number of ways that you can find things that you like doing that you can find some way to help bring that to the screen. Our school is having a debate about what kinds of computer use is educational. What computer skills do you think kids should practice to give them the choices in their films in the work of their future? Well, I think the, the real way to think about it is to understand what the problem is you're trying to solve and then how a computer can help you solve that problem. <coughs> and also, before you even get to that level, make sure you know how to solve the problem without a computer. Because what a computer will do is, is let you solve the similar types of problems, but on a bigger scale. You can do more faster. But you still have to understand what the underlying science or math is or what it, what it is that you're really trying to learn. And learn that first. Learn it with pencil and paper. And then figure out how to do it with a computer. As a visual effects artist, what are some of the tricks that you use in movies? Well, the tricks are really trying to understand where audiences are going to be interested in seeing and trying to make sure that you're focused on those tricks. Or sorry, on those, those, those aspects of it. So, you know, for example, if we're looking at something like, uh, uh, like a character like Gollum, if you want to understand what he's saying and have the, the emotion come through, what you really do is you study a, a performance. Like in this case, we work with Andy Serkis. And you really try to understand everything that he's doing and try to make sure that the character we create does the same thing. So it's a little bit of a trick, but it's also just really uh, uh, having kind of a deep understanding of what you're trying to achieve. Our school theme comes from Walt Whitman. It's the power of story, what's your verse? What is a a visual effects scene you are responsible for that you're most proud of? You know, there's there's a lot actually. Um, but I you know, I'll pick out one because in the in the Hobbit film uh, that we just finished last year, um, we had a scene where we got to bring Gollum back after having not seen him for, for ten years or so. And he got to do just a dialogue scene, the riddles in the dark scene, which when I read The Hobbit for the first time I really enjoyed that scene in the book, and that was really great to see that come alive and, and have Gollum and Bilbo, you know, doing doing that riddle battle and and have them sort of challenging each other and, and Bilbo kind of, you know, escaping with the ring and especially because now you know that what that's going to mean for for what we're going to see in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very clever, princess. Very clever. <laughs> 
a, a box without hinges, key, or, or lid, yet golden treasure inside is hid. Well? And I heard you say that Bill, that the actor who played Bilbo was not very short. Um, how did you make him so look so short? Oh well, all of the actors uh, who played the dwarves were normal sized people. Yeah. And so what we would do is, um, you know, in in old style filmmaking, there's a trick called forced perspective, right? Yeah. Where if you want to have something look small, you put it, you know, kind of far away from the camera and put the other thing closer to the camera. That's what we did on Lord of the Rings. So if you had Gandalf sitting next to Frodo, uh, we, you know, we put Frodo far away from the camera and Gandalf close to the camera. And they, they looked bigger, but they weren't sitting next to each other. Now when we did Hobbit, you couldn't do that because you, you were in stereo and you could see that in space they were not close to each other. So what we had to do was design two cameras that would essentially replicate that trick for us. So you, what you have to do is figure out the trigonometry between the two cameras, and one has to move at a different speed and a different scale and a different size than the other one. But if you do that and choreograph the two together, then you can make it appear as if both of them are shot with the same camera. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. For me, when you're finished with a film, the best moment is when you can sit down and watch it. You know, because we make these films because these are films that we like to watch. And, and so the, the true test is once you sit down and watch the film, do you enjoy it? Is there anything that pulls you out of the film? And for me, there wasn't. And so I could just sit back and, as if I'd never seen it before, just kind of watch it and enjoy the adventure. Mm -hmm.